Happy Christmas, everyone, as we celebrate our Saviour, Jesus Christ. I'm sure we all have lots of different traditions and things that we do at this time of year. Danny and I often watch a Christmas movie together. And this year, we watched uh, a movie called It's a Wonderful Life. And It's a Wonderful Life is actually, was actually made in 1946. It's in black and white. And it follows this amazing story of this man called George Bailey. And what happens in is George has to lay aside his dreams time and again. And, and it's this story of self-sacrifice and love for others. As he, as he remains in his hometown, just laying aside his dreams to travel the world because he wants to save his father's business. And through this building society, he saves other people's homes. And even on the day that he gets married, on his wedding day, he and his wife, they give away all of their money that they'd saved up for their honeymoon because this situation happens in this emergency and they just give it all away to help other people. It's just this incredible story of self-sacrifice and love. But as the story goes forward, George ends up going through some really difficult stuff and he gets to this point where he just feels so broken and disheartened and he just says, you know, he just says this, this, this whole thing of, I wish that I'd never been born. And an angel comes to speak to him and, and the angel shows him what his, what the world would be like if George Bailey had never been born and, and he shows George the impact that his life has had on so many people, how he's enriched their lives with these, these amazing acts of love, how he's really impacted others. And there's a scripture in 1 John 4, 7 to 12 and it speaks about loving others and it says this, beloved, let us love one another for love is from God and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. That's who he is. God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. Such a beautiful scripture. You know, in that scripture and even further on in this same chapter, the, the same three words are used. And I would say that these three words are the most theologically loaded three words in the entire Bible. That's just my opinion. But these three words, and they appear here in a little bit later on in the chapter, if you want to keep reading in your own time. And it says these three words. It says, God is love. God is love. Why, why is that so significant? Yeah, we, think, we can say, yeah, of course, God is love. You know, notice it doesn't say God is loving, because then that would mean that that's something that God does some of the time. You know, sometimes maybe God is loving, but then sometimes maybe he has wrathful or maybe other times he's jealous or maybe there's these things, these attributes or things that God does some of the times. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say God is loving. It says God is love. It's not something God does, it's who he is. It's his very nature, his very being. And I, I wear glasses, I'm wearing contact lenses now, but I often wear my glasses. And you know, when I'm not wearing my glasses, I, the world is so blurry, I find it really frustrating when I can't see. But when I put my glasses on, it just becomes so clear, so crisp, and I can see the world around me. And I just believe that these three words, this almost this theological lens, if you like, we can put this on, this sense that God is love. When we put those lenses on, when we look at God, it changes how we look at God and it changes how we look at the world when we see it through the lenses that say that God is love. It affects how we view God because, you know, it means that if God is love, if we think about the truth of that, it means that everything God does comes from a place of love because it's who he is. It's his very essence and his nature. And sometimes, you know, if we're honest, we struggle with our view of God. We can struggle with who he is, maybe things that have happened in our lives. And, and we can have this sense of, is God really a loving father? How can he allow this to happen? Or we can read the Old Testament and say, oh, wow, God seem, has these moments where, oh, God seems wrathful. What does that mean, his wrath? And, um, and what, what about God's discipline in our lives? The Bible says God disciplines those he loves. Well, you know what? If God is love, that's who he is, it means everything he does comes from a place of love. This is so significant and powerful. That means that when, when we read about things like the wrath of God, actually that isn't, must be 
an expression of his love in some way, his anger towards sin, his, his love for the world. And whatever that is, his discipline, he disciplines those he loves. Everything God does comes from a place of love because God is love. So it changes how we view God. And when we, we read the Old Testament or even how we look at our world and our lives, we know that God is loving because that's who he is. He's loving because he is love. And it changes how we view other people because we know that if God is love, we are humanity is created in the image of God. We are made in his image, in his likeness. So our whole lives should be a reflection of that mutual self-giving other focused love that God is in himself and that is the truth that spurs us on and you know we can watch films like it's a wonderful life we can watch this, these these acts of selflessness that like George Bailey does in his life and we know that we're called to love others and to make sacrifice for ourselves to love them but how do we do that where does that come from well it says in the scripture in verse 9, this is so awesome as we come to celebrate the birth of Jesus at Christmas. It says, in this, the love of God was made manifest among us. That God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. Jesus has come so that we might live through him. And as we celebrate at Christmas, the most significant act of love in the history of humanity that Jesus came into the darkness come to be with us to live the perfect life to die on the cross for our sins to be resurrected to new life and to be ascended upon high with the father that we may live through him and it's just such an encouragement to carry that truth at this time of year but throughout the whole year that truth that God is love and he calls us to be that light of love to the world because it's who he is. And we do that through Jesus, through relationship with him, through the Holy Spirit, through abiding in him, through spending time with him, being filled with his presence, his goodness. And then we can do those acts of love. Then we can love the world because it comes from a place of encounter and being filled by a God who is love. It's who he is. God is love. And we hope that you have a really blessed Christmas and as you celebrate our saviour and um, we're going to looking forward to seeing you in the new year. We're going to be back meeting at the Castle School on January the 8th. We're really looking forward to seeing you then. And we just want to really wish you a blessed Christmas and just say, you know, take care, have a joyful Christmas. I just want to pronounce a blessing over us on this day and this time of year. I want to say, may the Father who has loved the eternal son from before the foundation of the world, shed that love upon you, his children. Amen.